Through Brigade Reap's programs, we provide startups with mentorship, funding, and access to an extensive network of industry experts, investors, and corporate partners. We're proud of their journeys, and we'll have some of them showcasing their work and how they are disrupting the real estate space. We hope that our audience here today and the real estate community on the whole can support them. We have three showcases for you today, and in each showcase, we'll have two startup founders who will be talking to us. Our first startup duo is Realtimate and the Groundwater Company. We'll begin with Mr. Pavan Reddy from Realtimate. May I request our audience to please be seated. Our prop tech founders are very excited about what they do, very passionate. So we'd love for that enthusiasm to be reciprocated. If we just need 10 more minutes of your time and then we'll break for lunch. We promise there's some great food for you, but if you could all join us inside for just 10 more minutes, we'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Hey guys. Can you all hear me? I hope you can hear me. Hey everyone, uh, we are Team Realtimate. Um, we are a real estate transaction management firm. So I think uh, in the prop tech space, there are a lot of solutions that uh, deal with lead management, uh, listing, demand gen, etc. But when it really comes to a transaction, right, when trying to execute a transaction, there are not many solutions. Where two parties can actually interact digitally and close a transaction seamlessly. So I'm Pavan Reddy, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Realtimate, and this is Bala Bhatt. He's the CTO and co-founder of Realtimate. And um, we have deep tech and product experience uh, working for firms like Red Hat and Apple uh, back in the US for about 20 years. Uh, we returned from the US, and we bring the best of user experience, privacy, and security to the mix. So while we were in the US, we uh, you know, indulged in real estate transactions naturally. And, uh, you know, we felt that the uh, going was great in the U.S. Everything is so seamless, right? But when we try to do the same in India, trying to buy or lease a property in India, we felt that, you know, the transactions were very manual in nature, very time-consuming, and really complex. And add to that the insecurity of exchanging money with a completely unknown person, right? So... When we dug deeper, we found that even for real estate agents or developers in particular, there are a lot of challenges like increased delays, reduced transaction volume, and diminished customer satisfaction. Uh, all in all, not a great experience for several stakeholders. So we thought, why can't engaging in a real estate transaction be as seamless as buying a product on Amazon with security and relatively from anywhere in the world? So we got to work, and we built a tech platform 
centered on three Cs, right? Completely digital, comfort of an escrow, and convenience of WhatsApp. And what we essentially, through our product, let you do is create an agreement and perform KYC, open a digital escrow account, deposit money seamlessly, uh, you know, buy an e-stamp, complete e-sign from anywhere in the world. So now, this is completely remote executable, so being anywhere in the world, it's, it, it's, not, it's still not a problem. And because we have an escrow in the mix, security is not an issue. So we have uh, three products, right? Uh, a rental workflow for agents, which, they, which can be used directly from uh, uh, the, our website or seamlessly through WhatsApp. A rental workflow for developers, which can be integrated seamlessly into your existing CRM, into the de developer's existing CRM, and be, get them digital ready within a week, and a resale or a new sale workflow. So with this, we increase the certainty and the speed of the transaction. So, you know, we have a tool called as BrokerMate, special, uh, specifically for uh, agents. These guys are some of the most underserved customers or stakeholders in the real estate market, right? Uh, they're either overpriced out of the market uh, due to existing CRMs, which are really pricey and overwhelming features. So what we built, we built a simple tool where they can seamlessly uh, use it and create agreements, and their end users get updates on WhatsApp. The end users don't need any kind of uh, uh, profile creation or login or an app download. They can just plug and play. they can just seamlessly use WhatsApp and complete their transaction. And so now our developers love, love us because we are a plug and play CRM module which can be integrated into their CRM for zero capex and get digital ready within a week. And their customers can be uh, can execute any real estate transaction from anywhere in the world because we enable e-stamp and the other based email uh, or email based signatures. And finally, we are completely compliant, right? We enable instant KYC, comprehensive background verification, and we have escrow features as well. So finally, you know, we, our customers love us, and we would love to see uh, a lot of you uh, in, uh, in, in this list as well. And uh, we'll be around if you want to talk to us and learn more about, more about us. Um, and I want to close this off by saying that um, you know, thank, thanking the Brigade REAP team for giving us an opportunity to uh, present here, and also the Brigade Group and Brigade Plus team for trusting in us and uh, um, adopting our solution. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and uh, we'll break for lunch now. We'll see you very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Participation uh, now. You know, they say that this magical, marvelous food on our plate, the sustenance we absorb, has a story to tell. It has a journey, and it leaves a footprint. It leaves a legacy, much like the real estate industry, isn't it? With a story to tell and a journey that's inspiring, we have the startups that REAP has supported, uh, and we have the showcase from them, five minutes that every startup gets. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Jagdish from the Groundwater Company. Can we have the mic on, please? Thank you so much. So, uh, good afternoon. I'm sure all of us had a good lunch, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of this organization called The Groundwater Company. We are your subsurface experts. So let me tell you what that basically means, right? Can we move next? Yeah, so uh, as realtors, right, what are we good at? Anything above the ground, right, is known to us. Today, uh, you give me a parcel of land, which is probably, you know, X amount of acres, where there used to be 10 houses that we could construct probably a few decades back. We can probably do about 200 or 300 vertical developments today. As a consequence of which, the way we leverage the land has changed over the past few decades. But the way we manage the subsurface in terms of water and other unknown factors still remains, you know, unknown to us. So, okay, why is it going up front? It's not, next please. Yeah, so subsurface as of today is unknown to us. 
uh, and that's a big risk factor. So you basically talk to any developer. Yeah, so if you talk to any developer, there are three fundamental problems that they come up with, right? Any development you take. Either they have very little water, which means they have borewells that are drilled one after another, and they just run dry after a few months. Second thing, unexpected seepage and flooding. Uh, what do we do for that? We basically deploy pumps, take the water out, just to find more water very next day. Third thing, the biggest of them all, rocks basically cropping out of nowhere during the excavation stage, causing the delay in project delivery timelines, as well as escalating the cost of the overall project. So these are the three problem statements that we have. What is the solution, right? What we basically lack is enhanced visibility, uh, and the most important aspect as well, the recharge and the water quality, right? All of us have seen, are used to tanker waters here. Are we, are we not? Correct? Do you think this tanker guy who's supplying you water today, demand, the demand is escalating, right? And Bangalore has had drought this year, Chennai is having flooding. We're seeing climate change in action today. So do you think the same guy will be able to supply you with the same amount of water over the next few years probably? No, right? That's not the solution. That's not a sustainable solution. And every developer that you talk to says, I've spent lakhs and crores of rupees on recharging the ground, but I don't know where the water is going. See, if I'm eating the food, I better get the nutrition right. If I'm eating the food, somebody else is getting the nutrition, there's fundamentally something wrong with the way we are uh, functioning. So, and of course the last part is also improving the green building ratings. So can we have the video please? All of us have seen how the buildings basically look, right? How many of you have seen how the subsurface basically looks like? I want you to have a look at this video. Quite an interesting one, because this shows what's happening within the Mother Earth. How the water basically behaves, how the water flow basically happens and all these things. So this is a surface. All of us are used to seeing something like this. But now what is gonna happen is we are gonna go deep within the earth, see where the water is entering my property, how the water basically behaves subsurface, and why is this important is, I want you to pause it here for a moment. Pause it. Yeah, so the blue part that you basically see is the water entering your property, and that's the exit point. So if there is a flooding or a seepage, or you wanna do a groundwater recharge, right? This is where the water is entering your property, that's where the water is exiting your property. If you do your recharge over there, do you think you're gonna get the water, your neighbor's gonna get the water? Who's gonna get the water? Neighbors, right? We are not against charity, but I'm saying before I do the charity, my pocket should be full. If my pockets aren't full, if I end up doing the charity, I, I will not sustain or survive long to do the charity, correct? So second thing, if there's a flooding or a seepage, basement flooding that's basically occurring where the water is just gushing through the walls of the retaining wall, if the water is basically coming on the surface strata above the rock like this, it's very important for me to understand and address where the water is entering my property and I basically address the seepage that's coming from here and not somewhere else. The water is coming like this because of the rocky strata that you see over there, the red pattern, accumulation of water is happening, then the accumulation, more water goes in. So this can basically cause a lot of issues as we have seen in Uttarakhand, the tunnel collapsing, Chennai flooding issues and all these things. Can you play the video please? Continue. And then this is deep within how the veins, like human beings, we have veins, Mother Earth also has veins or streams in which the water basically flows. So if you end up basically drilling a borewell here, you probably might not get any water. If you drill here or recharge somewhere here, you will end up getting water. And you basically map the aquifers and find out where the right drilling has to be done to cut down your cost of drilling by 70%. At the same time, improving your sustainability by 800%. That's something that we have delivered across 100 projects that we have done so far. With that, I end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we now call upon Mr. Satyen and Mr. Chendur from SPATIC. We have the mic. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Satyen from Spatic, and I have my co-founder, Chendur, with me over here. We are building a market intelligence platform for retail and real estate businesses. Uh, I'm very excited to be presenting to, to you all here at Propagate. We are a team that brings in over 40 years of cumulative experience 
in retail, real estate, and technology businesses. Uh, I have over a decade building technology products, and I was a founding member of a real estate startup called Nestaway. Uh, my co-founder, Gautam, he comes with two decades uh, in retail and data science industry. He has worked with some of the top consultants in re uh, top uh, retail companies in US. And uh, Chendur is our GTM expert. He has over a decade handling uh, sales and GTM at uh, top Indian companies like Pay Paytm and Make My Trip. So uh, about the problem we are solving. So despite all the hype that you see about e-commerce businesses in India, only 10% of the shopping currently happens online in India. Yet 90% of the data tools and platforms are being built for online businesses. So there's a massive data gap that is, uh, that is there between online and offline businesses that needs to be bridged. The online world, they have got hundreds of tools for each step of their journey to improve their uh, website traffic. They have site optimization tools. Uh, they have competitive research tools to understand more about competition. They can optimize their marketing campaigns. Uh, and they have customer behavior tools to understand uh, their uh, customer and improve the product mix. But when it comes to retail, there are no such alternatives, or very few alternatives, right? Uh, so if, if a retailer has to launch a new store, or if a mall owner has to open a new, uh, new mall, their decision is primarily based on gut, or they are following competition. So they, are, they, they basically struggle to get any real-time available data about uh, each of the locations. Then if I have a location, how can I benchmark my performance with competition? There is no readily available data source using which I can look at the competition in the trade area and understand if I'm doing well or not. If I am running campaigns, if I'm running campaigns on billboards or out of home campaigns, there is no way available right now to measure the effectiveness of those campaigns. Most of the time we are relying on gut. And finally, I don't have a tool to understand the customer behavior uh, at different locations, and that's why I am basically taking decisions based on historical data. So all of this essentially leads to either bad locations for new stores, or they end up spending very heavily on the marketing, right? Uh, and as a result, uh, 20 to 40, uh, 25 to 40% of the stores eventually do not turn profitable and shut down within five years. Now, because of all of this, uh, the entire retail and real estate industry loses 13,000 crore annually which could have been avoided if I had access to the right set of data and tools. So that's what we are solving at SPATIC. We're building the Google Analytics for the offline world. We leverage the power of geospatial data and football data, bring in our own proprietary AI analytics on top of that to provide insights about customer, competitor, and football at a hyper-local, granular level. Yeah, uh, coming to our solutions. So we have built our solutions primarily to solve two things, uh, improve footfall, and uh, convert this footfall into higher, better conversion. Now, to do this, we have built four modules, uh, site selection, competitive intelligence, marketing optimization, and retail and product mix. And uh, in site selection, we primarily help uh, retailers to find profitable locations, and that too, uh, in one-fifth of, one of the time which they normally spend in identifying such new locations. And uh, we do this by collating a lot of uh, you know, uh, 100 plus location attributes uh, and bringing onto our platform and using our AI recommendation engine in order to find these profitable locations. In our competitive analytics uh, model, so we help retailers and malls to track their footfall on a real-time basis, weekly, monthly, or a daily basis, and also look at, uh, help them analyze where this footfall is coming from. Uh, in our marketing optimization module, so we help uh, uh, our clients in order to measure the effectiveness of their billboards and out of home campaigns and also help them identify blind spots in their marketing marketing based on where they are receiving traffic from and where they are not and in our uh, retail and product mix module uh, we provide insights on con consumer demographics uh, we provide insights on consumer psychographics in terms of brand affiliation uh, customer spending patterns and so on uh, and how do we do this so we build proprietary data sets from uh, 150 plus data sources, uh, data sources which uses like, you know, satellite imagery, GPS data from mobile, uh, POS data from, uh, uh, for spending and so on. And we uh, collate this uh, data into three different categories. Our AI recommendation engine actually, you know, sort of works on top of this data in order to build hyperlocal insights and solutions for our uh, 
uh, customers like retailers and malls. And this could be like, you know, as I was speaking earlier, site selection, identifying lookalike or uh, clone locations of the high performing stores, or even uh, identifying the right tenant mix planning for a mall, uh, which will ensure high footfall at the mall. Uh, yeah. So we have launched uh, uh, few four months back, and in the last four months, we have generated uh, tremendous interest. We have 25 plus brands onboarded on our beta right now, and we are growing very fast. So that's it. We are going to be around uh, uh, here. If you want to have a chat on this and want to know more details, we are happy to uh, have a chat on this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we now have uh, Mr. Siddharth to take us through the work that Raho is doing. Hello. Uh, so uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, my name is Siddharth, CEO and co-founder of Raho, a company that provides end-to-end -end experiences for the next-gen leisure traveler. So uh, we really started thinking about this during a New Year's trip to Kurk. Uh, it turned really bad very quickly. Uh, and um, then we started talking with our friends about it. And one of the things that came up is how you can never seem to find great places to stay at at affordable prices at leisure destinations, right? And so this was an interesting space for us. We started exploring it. And what we found is that there are gaps. And these gaps present a huge opportunity. So what is really give, providing this opportunity? What is creating uh, the opportunity is the change preferences of the next-gen traveler. So how have they changed? One. They have changed travel patterns. So the next-gen traveler, as some of you may know, is more interested in experiences than material things. So they travel more frequently. And as a result, they're traveling more affordably. Two, they're choosing Insta-worthy stays. What do I mean by that? Uh, they're choosing stays based on the look and the feel, the design. So that's something that's very important to them. Three, they want local experiences. So these are unique, authentic experiences. Like, for example, taking part in a local festival. So why is it that if you know, I am a traveler to a non-urban leisure destination, and I want to find a place that is, and I'm talking about places like Kabini, Kook, Chikmangalore, and I want to find a place that is affordable, that is well-designed, and gives me end-to-end -end convenience, why is it that I have to compromise? Why are the brands only able to provide budget hotels, uninspiring budget hotels, and poorly managed uh, you know, home stays. So the answer is really this, that the brands are focused on bookings, right? What do I mean by that? If you have ever booked uh, a stay in the affordable segment, you would have probably gone to maybe an OTA, right, which is like booking.com or Airbnb, and uh, you would have searched, you would have booked, and then that's it. Your relationship with the brand ends, right? But if you look at the entire traveler journey, right, all the way from booking till checkout, the brands just handle 10%. And that's really a tiny portion. The remaining 90% is handled by homeowners, property owners, and service providers. And they may not be able to provide a consistent quality of experience. And herein lies the problem. So what Raho is trying to answer, the question that we're trying to answer is, how do you capture that 90% of value in a way that's scalable? And so, which is why we at Raho say that we start where Airbnb has stopped by not solving for that small booking, we're solving for the entire traveler journey. So how do we do this? Uh, we have spent a good part of the year trying to figure out what the right model is for us. Um, and this is the model in a nutshell. Uh, we, have, uh, we partner with property owners, uh, and we help them renovate their properties, and we help them earn money through a revenue share by operating it as a hospitality property. And through doing that, we provide to the next-gen traveler high-quality, seamless experiences. So it sounds simple enough, uh, but of course there are challenges. Um, you're probably thinking, what about the operational intensiveness about, of this? What about the capex spend? How are you managing all these? And we at Raho have recognized these challenges, and we've come up with a playbook that addresses them. So we now have a low capex, unique, scalable model. And it's based on three main ideas. 
One is clustering. Clustering is having properties onboarded, partners within a 30 minute radius. And what this does for us, it el eliminates extra labor, uh, less people manage properties closer together, very simple. Two is digitization, and that's automating certain processes, simplifying, reducing unnecessary steps, uh, and therefore reducing labor further. But also at the same time, you as a consumer, you as a traveler, get end-to-end -end convenience at the click of a button. Three, outsourcing, which is essentially delegating certain functions like housekeeping, food and beverage, experiences. We also partner with property owners. And what this does with the, for us is really, it reduces our operational load. So we're doing less work. That's always good. Uh, the second thing is, uh, you know, we don't spend on the CapEx because the renovation and uh, the CapEx spend, infrastructure spend, is spent for by the partners. So this, with that model, Raho in India is across 30 destinations. We're choosing places that have high tourist activity, that are within a six hour drive from major metros, and have a lack of ecosystem in terms of options for food, beverage experiences. We also, it's very important for us to offer our partners a 5x over the rentals in the area. So, uh, and based on this criteria, we want to pick places. So we wouldn't necessarily pick a place like Goa, which has really high rents, plenty of options, as you may know, for food experiences. We would pick a place like Kabini, which has uh, not a developed e ecosystem, doesn't have the infrastructure. Uh, so with, with that, we want for you, our travelers who visit our property, the first thing, you're thinking of a leisure travel, the first thing that should come to your mind is a Raho stay. And the team to do that is just this one. It's me, Siddharth, uh, there's Simona and uh, Gautam. I'm uh, in charge of really sales for partner onboarding, so property partners talking to them, getting them on board. My uh, background as an architect really helps with the product design, the uh, design of the user experience. Um, here we have, in the middle, we have Simona, our chief operating officer. She's right here in the crowd. Um, so she's, she's really got a background in the NGO space, sort of working at the grassroots levels with uh, people. She's excellent managing people. And so she's in charge of making sure we deliver high quality stays and experiences to travelers. Third, we have Gautam, who's our chief real estate officer. Gautam is really in charge. He has a background as a civil engineer, construction and real estate. And so he's in charge of working with the property owners and making sure that the property, we, so I sign, and he makes sure that it gets online or onboarded or operational in the shortest time possible. So this is the dream team. Uh, with that, we are building India's most loved vacation, travel, and hospitality brand, and I invite you all to be, come be part of our journey. Thank you. Thank you for your time and attention. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about Raho, please reach out. Thank you. PropTech founders telling us inspired Raho. That's really the takeaway from all of this. I hope you've enjoyed listening to our PropTech founders here. It's time now for our third startup showcase for the day, which means our two PropTech founders who are waiting to take us through their innovation, their work. We have Mr. Ayan from Paving Bluff. about Paving Plus. I'm more comfortable for Hindi language, sorry for that. Paving Plus. Paving Plus is a journey for a mission that is going to be recycled from our and your house from the bottle of shampoo to the chocolate wrapper. It is rebuilt a better infrastructure and re-imagined a sustainable, more durable construction site. अगर हम इंडिया में बात करें, इंडिया में 13 मिलियन टन ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक जनरेट होता है। कलकत्ता, बैंगलोर, हैदराबाद जैसे शहरों में हर दिन 500 मैट्रिक टन ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक जनरेट होता है। यहाँ पे 30 परसेंट ही वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को रिसाइकल एंड अपसाइकल किया जाता है। ये जो बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है, इसी प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्यूशन के तौर पर पेविंग प्लस ये वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को 20 परसेंट से लेके 100 परसेंट तक रिसाइकल और रिब्यूल करता है और बनाता है पेवर ब्लॉक्स लाइक दैट। This is a made of the up to 20 percent of the waste plastic and this is a made of the 100 percent waste plastic. 
हमारा एक्चुअली वी आर इन द टू प्रोसेस वन ऑफ द पी ट्वेंटी प्रोसेस जहां हम अप टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को रिसाइकल करते हैं और इसको प्रीमिक्स बनाते हैं और इसको कंक्रीट के साथ मिक्स करके पेवर ब्लॉक्स टाइल्स और जितने भी कंस्ट्रक्शन मटेरियल होते हैं ये बनाते हैं इसकी अगर हम क्वालिटी की बात करें ये ज़्यादा कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेन जो ट्रेडिशनल जो मटेरियल होते हैं उनसे ट्वेंटी परसेंट ज़्यादा मजबूत होता है और दुरेबल होता है वहीं जो हमारा पी ए प्रोसेस होता है ये एक पेटेंटेड प्रोसेस है और पेटेंटेड इसके रेशियो है जहाँ हम अप टू एट्टी ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को यूटिलाइज करते हैं किसी भी टाइप का वेस्ट प्लास्टिक एम हो पेट हो एच ए किसी भी टाइप का वेस्ट प्लास्टिक जिससे हमारा जो प्रोडक्ट होता है इसकी लोड बेरिंग कैपेसिटी डेढ़ सौ मैट्रिक टन से भी ज़्यादा होता है साथ ही साथ ये हल्का भी होता है ये पूरे प्रोसेस में किसी भी टाइप का वाटर क्यूरिंग की रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं होता है अगर मैं कम्पटेटिव एनालिसिस की बात करें कि हमारा प्रोडक्ट ट्रेडिशनल से कितना कम्पटेटिव वे में है तो हमारा जो प्रोडक्ट होता है ये ज़्यादा बेहतर होता है वो फिजिकल टर्म्स हो या फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टी हो या केमिकल प्रॉपर्टी ये दोनों में बेहतर परफॉर्म करता है और ये पूरे प्रोसेस में हम किसी भी टाइप का वेस्ट प्लास्टिक यूटिलाइज करते हैं वैलिडेशन की बात करें आज हमारे कंपनी के पास एक ग्रांड पेटेंट है बारह से ज़्यादा हमने अलग अलग डिफरेंट वेस्ट मटेरियल के ऊपर हमने रिसर्च पेपर पब्लिश किया है अलग अलग इंटरनेशनल जर्नल में इसकी अगर जर्नी बताए ट्वेंटी परसेंट से एट्टी परसेंट की जर्नी स्टार्ट कहाँ से हुई थी जब मैं कॉलेज स्टूडेंट में था तब हमने ये जर्नी स्टार्ट किया था दो में हमने दो में प्रोडक्ट बनाया दो हज़ार में कलकत्ता के वेस्ट बंगाल में अलग अलग जगहों पर इंस्टॉल किया वहाँ पर हमने दो साल तक देखा कि क्या चेंजेज आ रही है हमारे प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर देन विल भी कम कि हाँ हमारा प्रोडक्ट सस्टेन करता है देन विल भी यार 20 परसेंट में क्या होगा और ज़्यादा बढ़ाते हैं और प्लास्टिक यूज करते हैं हमने इसको 80 परसेंट तक यूटिलाइज किया प्लास्टिक वेस्ट को और हमारे पास एक प्रॉपर रेशियो मिला कि ये रेशियो डालने से हमारे प्रोडक्ट की जो स्ट्रेंथ होती है और क्वालिटी होता है ये ज़्यादा इम्प्रूव होता है देन यू गोद अवार्ड फ्रॉम दी रामनाथ कोविंद कोविंद जब उस वक्त प्रेजिडेंट थे हल्थ प्राइज से एंड देन वी फाइल द पेटेंट अगस्त टू में हमने कंपनी बनाई और दे वन सी स्टार्ट टू सेल आवर प्रोडक्ट एंड जनरेट रेवेन्यू मैं किसी भी बिजनेस को चलाने के लिए स्टार्टअप क्योंकि दे वन में सुबह ही बात हो रहा था कि ऑपरेटिंग मॉडल क्या है बिजनेस क्या है रेवेन्यू कैसे जनरेट करते हो तो हमारा बेसिकली तीन बिजनेस मॉडल है कोको कंपनी ऑन कंपनी ऑपरेटेड आज हमारे पास दो रनिंग प्लांट थे कोको के कोको फ्रेंचाइजी ऑन कंपनी ऑपरेटेड जो अभी एक हमारे पास कलकत्ता में हमने एक छोटा सा वीडियो डाला था क्योंकि ऑल ओवर इंडिया से बहुत ज़्यादा ही हमें ऑर्डर आ रहे थे तो हमने एक छोटा सा वीडियो डाला था एक महीना पहले कि किसी जिसको जिसको फ्रेंचाइजी लेना वो अपना बताएं था लगभग फाइव मिलियन से ज़्यादा हमारा जो व्यू था वीडियो के ऊपर गया लगभग टेन थाउजेंड से ज़्यादा लोगों ने मेल डाला कि हमें फ्रेंचाइजी चाहिए हमने उसको फिल्टर आउट किया उसमें से हमने हंड्रेड को फिल्टर आउट किया जो अभी हमारे पास हंड्रेड प्लस ये फ्रेंचाइजी के इंटेन है और टेन प्लस स्टेट्स अलग अलग से हैं जिनकी अभी मीटिंग कंटिन्यूस चल रही है अभी बेंगलोर में भी है बम्बे में भी है कुछ मीटिंग बाकी है रिवेन्यू मॉडल की बात करते हैं एक्चुअली हमारा रिवेन्यू मॉडल जो है हम अपने प्रोडक्ट को डायरेक्टली सेल करते हैं वहाँ से हम रिवेन्यू जनरेट करते हैं हम फ्रेंचाइजी सेल करते हैं तो वहाँ से हमें एक फ्रेंचाइजी फी मिलता है एंड थर्ड पॉइंट जो हमारे जो प्रीमिक्स होते हैं जो हमारे जिनको हम फ्रेंचाइजी देते हैं तो हम उनको एक प्रीमिक्स देते हैं कि आप जो भी बना रहे हो बनाओ इसके साथ ये प्लास्टिक मिक्स है ये पूरा प्रॉपर बैग से आप इसको डालो आपके प्रोडक्ट में क्वालिटी इन्हांस हो जाएगा और बेहतर प्रोडक्ट होगा अगर मैं मार्केट साइज की बात करें मैक्सिमम लोग एयरपोर्ट से घर से आए होंगे फ्रॉम मतलब जहाँ देखिए आज पेवर ब्लॉक्स का बहुत बड़ा मार्केट है फ्रॉम एयरपोर्ट टू ये लॉन्जिंग एरिया एनी प्लेसेस तो आज वर्ल्ड में 2.7 बिलियन का मार्केट है और इंडिया में 35 बिलियन का है कोलकाता जैसे शहरों में एट्टी बिलियन का बत्तीस मिलियन का मार्केट ये है करांट ट्रेक्शन की बात करें हमने टिल डेट नाइन्टी वन मैट्रिक टन ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक जनरेट किया हुआ है टिल डेट हमने 2.5 करोड़ से ऊपर हमने रिवेन्यू जनरेट किया हुआ है हर मंथ हमारे रिवेन्यू थर्टी टू थर्टी फाइव परसेंट से इंक्रीज हो, हो रहे हैं प्रोजेक्शन की बात करें 2023 में हमारा तेईस चौबीस का प्रोजेक्शन ये है कि हम अप्रॉक्स चार करोड़ का रिवेन्यू जनरेट करेंगे और 500 सौ मेट्रिक टन ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक यूटिलाइज कर लेंगे वहीं 2026 और 27 का अगर मैं टारगेट बताऊं तो हमारा रिवेन्यू है कि 90 करोड़ का हम तो रिवेन्यू एनी हाउ जनरेट कर लेंगे इसका रीजन ये है कि आज हमारे पास बहुत बड़े बड़े बिल्डर के साथ हमारा साइन एग्रीमेंट है एम है कि हमारे जो प्रोडक्ट होते हैं दे आर इन द लाइनअप कि आपका प्रोडक्ट है तो आप पहले हमें दीजिएगा तो इस इस कारण और हम दस हज़ार मेट्रिक टन ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को भी कंज्यूम करेंगे और थी माई सेल्फ रंजन कुमार गुप्ता फाउंडर एंड सी ओ ऑफ द पेविंग प्लस आई कम्प्लीटेड माई बी टेक फ्रॉम सिविल डिपार्टमेंट एम टेक फ्रॉम
प्लास्टिक मैन ऑफ इंडिया है ये हमारे टेक्निकल आर एन डी पार्क में इनका बहुत सपोर्ट रहता है हमारे नए प्रोडक्ट को वैलिडेशन करने के लिए इनका बहुत बड़ा सपोर्ट रहता है डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर साधवान कुमार घोष जो गवर्नमेंट के साथ कंसल्टिंग फॉर्म करते हैं हमारे कंसल्ट करते हैं गवर्नमेंट वेस्ट बंगाल गवर्नमेंट के साथ वही समीर जोशी सर जो प्लास्टिक वेस्ट है प्लास्टिक के बारे में जो प्रॉब्लम होती है जहाँ हमें प्लास्टिक कंजप्शन के लिए जो हेल्पफुल करते हैं तक समीर जोशी अकीब हुसैन सर हमारे जो बिजनेस मॉडल इसको सपोर्ट करने में इनका हेल्प रहता है इम्पैक्ट क्रिएट हम इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट के साथ साथ सोशल इम्पैक्ट भी क्रिएट करते हैं हम क्रिएट बोलते नहीं हमने करता करते भी हैं अभी तक हमने बहुत सारे जगहों पे वेस्ट प्लास्टिक ड्राइव चलाया वहाँ से वेस्ट प्लास्टिक कॉलेक्ट करते हैं रैक पिकर को सपोर्ट करते हैं जो रैक पिकर एम प्लास्टिक नहीं लेते हैं उनको बोलते कि आप रैक प्लास्टिक एम लो हम उसी भाव में खरीदेंगे जो आपसे हम पेट प्लास्टिक खरीदते हैं हम अभी टारगेट इस चीज़ की बात करें सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल की तो नाइन इलेवन और थर्टीन को पॉइंट आउट करते हैं थैंक यू सो मच Ji, definitely from ways to wow. Uh, our final prop tech showcase uh, for today is by Mr. Sri Ram Kuchimanchi from Smarter Dharma. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thank you, thank you, Deep and Brigade for inviting us here. Uh, three cheers to Paving Plus. If, uh, I don't know if you have not heard, it's a phenomenal product. I, I want to talk about them a lot more. But here's a question: How many builders are here? Okay, and how many other stakeholders like architects, MEP? So how do you get access to a product like Paving Plus? Do you know how many are there in the market today? Do you know where you'll get? You know how to figure out whether a product like Paving Plus is going to fit your product, your business, your you know new project you're building? Whether it fits in your city? Whether the carbon footprint, if it comes from Calcutta to a trivandrum is going to work for you. Sustainable decision making in all these is required. And sustainability is no more an esoteric thing. It was 15 years ago, right? Now numbers drive sustainability. It's like a, any other metric of how you run your business. That's what we do. My name is Sriram Kuchimanchi. I'm the founder and CEO of Smarter Dharma. Uh, we figured that creating business value, making sustainability tangible is very critical. Esoterically, all of us speak here. Yeah? We are saying I'm not going to use plastic. But do you know how much impact your building is doing? We, do, we don't have that data. Do you know how much impact at design stage we know? That's what we want to build. Uh, I think we have crossed the, especially in a city like Bangalore, talking about why sustainable is important. I don't need to talk. What we found is this, right? That uh, how to become sustainable, there are multiple ways. So people are realizing that I should go for net zero. People are saying I'll go for certification. Or they're saying, you know what? I know what to do. I need specific material and solution. So, we are here with one platform which will answer all these. We are the first ones to have automated IGBC certification. We, can, we have a patented algorithm where we can say how you could become net zero with the cost benefit analysis of that. We also have a marketplace we just launched where Paving Plus of the world will all be on the platform. Right? So quickly I'll show you how the screens are. So this patented algorithm creates your goal. Right? What it does, you come and say I have 10 acre land I want to do 1,000 apartments, this is my location. We can then say, how net zero can you be? 35% sales of your energy, 25% of embodied carbon drop for 40 rupees per square feet increase of price. We can show, as you can see here, right? 50 rupees per square feet. We can automatically calculate and tangibilize sustainability for you. We have also a marketplace where today you can see every one of this material. It's open, you can look it up, happy to share that. Uh, and IGBC automation. Imagine you have a project, you, at the beginning you know how much, what certificate can you go for? And the moment you know that I can go for, I can get 65 points, you know that you're not getting anything than basic certification. What else to make it 80 and become IGBC platinum? That's something you can decide. This kind of tangibility to sustainability we bring. Uh, this is the amount of impact we've created over time. Uh, Brigade themselves are a client of ours. Uh, Bangalore has really pro progressive real estate developers. They're, people are coming and asking us, tell us how to become net zero. I think that's what we need, builders to come and stand up and say, I want to become net zero. It is not difficult. My belief, and I hope the builders will agree to that, is money is not a problem. They want to know what will they get for that money. 
And I think that's what is needed. Uh, it's not about skimping on that 50 rupees extra you need to spend. If you know exactly what you'll get from 50 rupees, you're willing to spend. That's what we do. Uh, the impact we've created, uh, I showed you earlier, but for the industry itself, right? Now, why is this important for us to understand? Uh, you know, how, what is India's goal? Right now, COP28 is going on. India has a goal that by 2040, we'll be 40% carbon decarbonized. And last Saturday, we were in an event with Kredai and IM Bangalore and Smart Adama did a sustainability for real estate developers. Boman Irani was there. He stood up and said, India has a 2070 goal to be net zero. Kredai wants to be 2050. First, the question is, what is net zero? We need to really define it, but then we need to do this. But real estate industry has a huge footprint. So Kredai standing up is required, and every builder needs to make this part of the goal. Uh, these are all the people we worked with. As you can see, Brigade's uh, been very progressive in that sense, working with us, but there are a lot of other builders working. And our marketplace is gaining traction. A lot of other manufacturers are coming on board. We have about 2,000 odd material. Uh, so we are here to mitigate a billion tons of carbon by 2030. And for that, every one of you have to work with us together. We can make that possible. We can contribute to India's goal. Thank you. We're talking about energy.